Okay, hi, uh, my name is Derek and I'm your instructor for our machine learning class and data analytics class. Um, today I'm going to kind of try and walk you through the steps of uh, getting started and getting your um, system set up so you can use the Jupyter Lab um, and Anaconda Python environment that I've given you on a Mac OS X system. So this is for Mac OS X. I'm really not a Mac person and I'm actually uh, doing the examples here in a virtual machine so I probably can't go all the way to the end but I can show you installing the stuff and getting the things ready. So um, these steps are in the README um, and we're going to go through these. Let me go ahead and bring up that README here. Actually I should have had that up here before I started. So um, if you're in my class, um, you might be watching this video for um, um, for another class of mine. I mean, I I, um, I might reuse this same video for my machine learning class, or for my intro to computational science class, or maybe my deep learning class, or things like that. So, so anyway, the, the, the name of the project might be slightly different, but uh, you should be able to use these same instructions to uh, get set up if I gave you a virtual machine to use, okay? Um, so anyway, if, if you missed that um, um, URL for this particular class, it's bitbucket.org slash dharder slash mlpython class, okay? So that, that'll get you these more detailed readme instructions that, that we want to use, okay? So basically, to get things set up, you have to have git installed, um, which you probably, if you're a Mac person, should already have on your system, okay? Um, and then we need to get VirtualBox and Vagrant installed, um, and then clone our class repository, um, and then start up the uh, virtual uh, box. Um, so um, let's start with with Git. Um, so first of all, if if you are not familiar with using um, the command line prompt uh, or, or a command line terminal. Um, first of all, so you can find it on the finder under applications. Uh, it should be down here under utilities. So you want uh, not console the um, or is, yeah terminal there. And um, yeah, I usually just kind of drag that over to my dock since I use it relatively quite a bit, right? So um, when you start up a command line prompt, um, like I show in the instructions here. Just do like a which git and make certain that you have it. You should find it and you should be able to run uh, git dash 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 version there. Um, and, and it should give you a version number. So it might not be exactly the same as what you get here. So if you don't have git, um, I'd be surprised. But if you don't have it, I definitely recommend um, just go ahead and, and use brew. So uh, you can go directly to the the get SCM site and download it. So that's one thing you could do. Um, so open that up here. Sorry, I've got some display issues with my things there. So you, so you should be able to download it um, for, uh, my link might have been for Windows. So, um, so you might have to go over here and um, go to the other download page here. So, yeah, I probably need to check my link there. So if, if you just go to the down there, so, so you should be able to get it, I think. Um, oh, the, and, but they even have instructions they have, um, for brew. But if you don't have brew uh, installed yet, before you can do the brew install git, um, like I mentioned down here, you do need to first install the, the package manager the, the brew package manager. So all you have to do to do that is is open up a can, command line terminal like I did there, and then just copy and paste this in here. And that should get your brew set up. And then once you have the brew installed, so you should be able to do an Alt C, um, and then Alt V. I'm not gonna actually run this, but um, I don't know Command Command C and Command V. That's right, not Alt uh, or whatever your command is. So Command C and then. V to, to get that in there, I think. So, 
Um, so anyway, so if, if you run that command, uh, it'll install brew for you, and then, then you would do that brew um, install git, and, and you might have to be, you know, you might have to do that as, as, as the super user, so. Okay. So that, that's, that's getting git uh, installed. So then the next thing, we need to get VirtualBox and Vagrant installed, so you can use this link. I'll go to here. I've already downloaded this, so I won't have to download it. And I'll get I'll show the install getting started here. So, but yeah, for VirtualBox, you want to go there and um, go to the OSX host. Oh, and I'm, I'm installing it again. I didn't mean to, to start the install again there. So, um, so. Um, I have to pause here. I'm having a little bit of problem with my virtual machine here. I lost the, the pointer here. So let me pause and come right back. So okay, uh, hopefully that cleared up my issues there. So, um, yeah, like I said, go ahead and get the uh, virtual box. Um, so when you download that, like I said, I already download it, but you get, I guess, I'm not really a Mac person, you, you get a regular uh, .dmg installer. Um, so I think the way you normally do these, from my understanding, if, if you double click on that, um, it'll like open it up, it's like kind of like mounting a disk or something, and then, then you just drag that over into your um, applications, I believe. So that, that's all you would need to do to get the virtual box installed. So let's see here if this opens up. So, or I guess we can follow the instructions they have here. So double click on this icon. Um, installed here so um, I'm uh, uh, yeah so it does look like it's gonna run through an installer here so uh, for the most part you should be able to accept the um, um, the, the defaults you know so I don't think there's any defaults we need to change on this one so I'm gonna ask for your sort for your password to install it so I guess it needs root privileges um, and there. So hopefully um, the Oracle VirtualBox should install um, relatively easily. So yeah, I'm going to probably pause the video. It's going to take that long here and then come back to you again. So um, Oh, okay. So that was it. So we can probably get rid of the installer, just keep the installer here just in case I need it. So so yeah, the result of that, I believe, if I know Mac, if I remember, I mean, we should now see VirtualBox um, as a uh, application now in my applications down there. Yeah, so you should probably be able to double click on that and run it. Um, so another thing, as I mentioned in the, um, the readme here, um, this should um, install the VBox Manage, which I don't think that we'll need, um, but, um, and, and it might not put this onto your path by default, so let's see if we have it. Um, so if you already had a terminal open before you did the install, you really should close it off and open up a new one in case it did do some stuff in your path, so. so oh yeah, so, so it did install that, and so, um, so hopefully you have that um, on your path. If you open up your um, command line tool and you can find your version, yeah. So as of the making of this video, you should be ha have 6.1.12 of VirtualBox or, or even newer um, of it on there. 
Um, so yeah, it looks like it installs it in user local, which is kind of a common thing on Mac instead of just in your user bin. So, um, so then the next thing you need is Vagrant, um, and you can go to this site and to download it. Um, it might not, yeah, I mean, make certain that, that you are downloading the, the Mac OS version, so. Um, and yeah, like I said, I've, I've already downloaded that as well, so it's also a DMG uh, installer. So once again, we'll try and run this, so we'll double click on there. And it should basically install it um, and then I think in this case you basically have to drag instead of double clicking here so I think this is a lot of DMGs kind of work like this um, so you so you get kind of your files mounted and then you can just take this package and drag it into your applications um, and that should install it so let's put it in there that right? Or do you double click that? I guess you double click that, so here, let, me, let me remove that. So again, sorry, I'm not, not the real, you know, uh, I don't use Max a lot, so so yeah, it looks like I double click that. Um, we get an installer again that's going to walk you through here. So, um, uh, so it needs your password to install. So Vagrant um, are, is kind of like a utilities for working with virtual machines. Um, so again, this one is definitely meant to be used from the command line. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, close off this terminal so we can open a new one. Okay, so the um, installers are relatively quick. So... So yeah, we end up with it in user local bin again for Vagrant. So in this one, you definitely want to make certain that, that you can use from the command line because we need to be able to run Vagrant from the command line. So so VirtualBox, I'm, I'm, I'm probably I'm expecting more people are familiar with that tool. So that's a what's known as a hypervisor for running virtual machines. Okay, so I'm giving you basically a setup virtual machine with Jupyter Hub and Jupyter Lab installed and, and, and Anaconda Python distribution installed. So Vagrant is a, is a tool, uh, it actually uses uh, VirtualBox hypervisor to run the virtual machines, uh, but it allows us to more easily manage um, uh, virtual machines and things. So that's kind of what, what uh, Vagrant is. So. Um, all right, so once you get those tools installed, uh, you, you should reboot your system. So, um, and when you reboot your Mac, make certain that, um, so I should probably check and have a link. The, this link is for like uh, PCs instead of Mac hardware. So I don't know if there's a, a similar thing in the BIOS of Mac, so, uh, but, but you might want to reboot, get into your BIOS and check, uh, make certain that you have uh, hardware virtualization enabled. Okay, so um, I'll, 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 I'll probably try and Google a link and see if, if that's something that you need to do with Macs or not. So, uh, And then after the reboot, um, you can try these things out. So um, um, I'm going to go ahead and try them out here um, because I already have these things installed. So. Um, so yeah, let, let's continue on from this way. So the, the next thing we want to do is clone the class repository. So what I normally recommend people do is create a repository directory, which I probably have one um, created here. So let's get a directory listing. So I already have a repositories directory. Um, 
So what I recommend doing is do something like this. So make directory repos, okay? Um, so that should get you a repository directory. So I mean, anything you do from the you know from the command line to change your file system, you should also be able to do the same thing or see changes. Uh, so if you go to your file finder, you know the the repos that I just created, you should be able to see it there. Um, now it's going to be empty, right? But then change into the repository directory, and we're going to do a git clone. Okay, so we're going to clone the class repository at this point. So you could type in um, what I had there. Um, so, so you could just uh, type this in, or you could copy and paste it. So, so I could, you know, um, copy it and then paste it into my shell there. So, right. So also the clone does so. Um, we're not going to be really using git um, um, fully in this class. So, so git is a tool for uh, for multiple people that are working on a piece of code or a software project or, or in, in, any kind of project. When you when you have multiple files like in a project and, and you're working together, git and, and other kinds of revision control systems are mainly. Uh, meant to, to help people collaborate, right? Um, so it keeps track of different versions of your files and, and uh, lets you check in and check out things. So uh, we're mostly not using it in that way in this class. I'm mostly using it so that I can push changes like new assignments or, or bug fixes or things to it and you can pull them down, right? So I'm mostly using it as a central kind of thing. But it's a tool that you really should learn as a graduate student. Um, so. Um, I'm kind of on a rural Texas uh, broadband connection here, so this might take a little bit of time, um, even though um, it's really not that big. It's, not, it's probably not even as big as the other two files that I downloaded here. But, uh, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pause, and then we'll come back when this is done downloading here. Okay, um, we're done with the clone. Okay, so as a result of the clone, um, what you'll see, what you should see is there'll be a new subdirectory called ML Python class or, or whatever the name is of the repository for the class that you're uh, working on here. Um, and if you look in that directory, and, and in fact, why don't we go ahead and change into there, so because you'll need to do that for the next step here. So if you look in there, so, so basically the clone just downloaded a file. So you'll have, have a bunch of files and directories in here, including a vagrant file, which is what we need. Uh, but you'll have files with the lectures and, and other things. So uh, again, you can should be able to um, look into your file finder and, and see the same you know files and directories and structure in here. So under the ML Python class, you get all these directories, uh, including like um, our lecture notebooks are down in here, a bunch of data files for the class are in here. Um, your assignments will be in here, so I don't know if um, you'll have all of those yet or not when you uh, are watching this video. Um, okay, so at this point, um, I mean, you should have the Vagrant installed and the VirtualBox installed, and you should have the repository clone, so you're ready to um, actually start trying to provision, you know, try, try to run the Vagrant box uh, to bring up the Jupyter Hub server here, okay? So, like I said here, you should change into the ML Python class and, and do a Vagrant up. So what this will do is it'll attempt to start the virtual machine, um, and it will, um, if the virtual machine, uh, it'll first download the virtual machine image, and then I'll try and start it, um, and then if it starts it correctly, successfully, it'll then install the things that are needed, like Python and um, Jupyter Hub and, um, and a bunch of other things, okay? So this probably won't be able to work here because I'm actually running this in, in a virtual ma machine myself, so I can't really do virtual stuff inside of the virtual things too easily, but I'll show you the steps here. We'll see if they work or not. So um, so I already did the, the, the change directory. So again, from your home directory, um, so you're normally on a Mac, you'll be in, in a sub in the directory called slash users, and then your username, 
And then if you did what I told you, you should have a repose directory now. Uh, and then from here, after you do the git clone, um, you should have a, a, a subdirectory called mlpython class or whatever, depending on the, the name of the repository you're using for our class here. And then from here, like I showed, um, there, there should be a vagrant file. So if that file is present, then you should be able to do vagrant up to start the virtual machine. Okay. So um, what this will try and do is it'll try and uh, download the uh, VirtualBox um, machine. So it looks like it's going to at least start the process here. I don't know if it'll be able to finish the process, but um, so, you know, again, if you're on a rural, rural um, Texas broadband, I normally get around, you know, 100K to 500K per second. So it usually takes less than an hour anyway, like half an hour to an hour or so once it gets going here. So, um, and um, when you're done with this, it's, so if it actually successfully downloads the box, then it will actually start it running, and then it'll start trying to install some stuff. So you'll see a bunch of messages go by. Some of them might look kind of like errors, but, but they're probably fine. So usually this is, works pretty well. So, so I, I found it to be relatively um, um, reliable on, on downloading and installing things. So. Um, and at the end, uh, I'm going to pause the video and, and we'll come back, but at, at the end here, um, I passed it by, but um, the last thing you should see, so, so keep that terminal up and, open, um, and if everything correctly downloads and installs, you should see this message from my installation script that Python 3 was installed successfully and that the Jupyter Hub Jupyter Lab server is running. So um, I'll let that run and we'll see if it, it succeeds or not. Hopefully it'll succeed for you. Um, and then when we come back, I'll show you kind of the final step of how you can actually access the Jupyter Hub server uh, and things. Okay. Okay, hi. Um, at this point, uh, you should have the, uh, the the vagrant up should have been done, uh, and so it probably took its time. Um, I think, as I mentioned uh, before, in my testing, normally, I mean, it takes some time, but it's been pretty reliable. So hopefully, that'll be the case for you. So you might even see um, I switched to a different terminal. Sorry about that, um, but. Um, uh, you should see a similar thing at the end when you do your first vagrant up. So this last um, output message here is coming from the installation scripts that I give you. So you should see that Python 3 was installed and that Jupyter, Hab, Jupyter Hub, Jupyter Lab <clears throat> is running, okay? So um, kind of to finish up here, um, the, the very first thing that I like to do is actually to, to shut it back down and, and start it back up again. Um, so I'll go into some more detail in this in the next video where I talk more about using Jupyter Lab and Jupyter Notebooks, okay, so as an introduction. But um, um, again, from the command line, um, if you just do Vagrant uh, and don't give it any other uh, command to do, you'll get a list of all the commands that you want to do. So we just performed the vagrant up, which starts in the very in the very first time it starts it up, uh, it runs this provisioning, which is really just installing um, the the software and things like Python and things that we need. So you would think there would be a, a vagrant down to shut it down, but it's actually vagrant halt. So so I usually just do a vagrant halt um, as my first thing <coughs> because. Um, Sorry, vagrant halt. All right, I, I mistyped it before. Um, so you should see that it that it says that it's forcing a shutdown. It doesn't take very long to do this. Um, um, although, yeah. So if you're wondering, I mean, we're actually running a virtual machine now uh, behind the scenes using VirtualBox. So so it actually shut it down. Um, and then you can do vagrant up again. So, like I said, it'll this will bring the um, virtual machine back up. It won't have to reprovision because it, it already installed everything. But I like to do this uh, because I want to point out a few things here. 
Um, so, I mean, this time, you know, it won't take as long, maybe less than a minute or so, should. Uh, but particularly look out for this. So first of all, make certain that you see that the um, port 8000 is being forwarded from the guest machine, that's the virtual machine, to your host. So that's how we're going to access uh, Jupyter Lab. actually, is through a browser uh, interface to, uh, to port 8000, okay? <coughs> um, yeah, and, and it should be forwarding port 22 um, here. This actually allows you to secure shell into uh, the um, virtual machine, which I'll show you. Um, actually, probably in the next video, I'll show it to you. Um, and you should see, I mean, you might get some some warnings or, or, or so, but you should see that the guest additions are running. Hopefully you'll see that and not get a, an issue. Uh, and then finally, you know, you want to make certain that the um, uh, your directory is mounted. So here, again, if you're on a Windows machine, you'll probably see like C colon, uh, users, your username, repos, and then the name of the repository. Uh, and it should be being... So, so basically what happens is this directory on your machine gets mounted into the guest and in, into the virtual machine's directory um, as a directory name slash vagrant, okay? So, uh, but, but that, that's the normal thing you should see, so it should, should be up and running, right? Uh, and then uh, quickly, um, so at this point, you know, we, we've done all these first um, five steps, so now we want to actually access Jupyter Lab, okay? So in the README, I, I talked about it. So you need to know the the default username and password. Uh, you need to know. So you bring up bring up a browser on the same machine where you have your virtual machine running, and go to localhost colon port eight thousand. So that's localhost and then a colon and then eight thousand, right? Um, so the full thing is HTTP colon slash slash localhost eight thousand. But if you just type in that. Um, that should be enough for most, um, you know, um, uh, browsers like Firefox or Chrome or whatever you're using. Now, the, the default username is Vagrant and the default password is Vagrant. So um, I already started this up before, but so I, I normally um, I use password managers for my more important passwords, um, but um, uh, I usually allow the browser password manager to remember unimportant things like this, so, so like my username and password here, but it's it's Vagrant, Vagrant should be all you need to, to be able to get into the uh, to Jupyter Hub and to, to run your own Jupyter Lab uh, instance here. Um, and then that should spawn what's known as a kernel, um, and you should get the Jupyter Lab um, interface here for you. And in particular, uh, again, if everything was installed correctly, you should find that on the file browser here um, <clears throat> that there's a directory called ML Python class, and this these files, even though they're being served from your virtual machine, are the the files here on your host directory. So, um, so, so basically, these same files, right? So. Uh, oh, and by the way, it, it downloads, th this is actually the Anaconda um, installer here. Um, I should probably fix my, um, my my installation script. You don't really need to have that uh, anymore once you've got Anaconda installed. So so you could actually get rid of that. But um, Okay, so that's basically it. So hopefully you were able to do that and you were able to, to, to get into your Jupyter Lab at the end of this video here. All right? So um, that's it for this video, um, and um, um, in the next video after that, I'm gonna after this I'm gonna go into using Jupyter, the basics of some of the parts of using Jupyter Lab and using uh, Jupyter Notebooks. All right, um, but uh, that's it for this video, and then I will see you guys in the next video. <clears throat>